right, so I'm down here real quick. What's up, y'all? It's me, Erica. I just wanted to come down here and say something really quick. Also, oh, wait a minute, y'all. This morning, no, was it this morning or was it late last night? I don't remember when it was, but Bobby Brown's son died, y'all. Like, oh my God. Girl, I was like, Bobby Brown cannot catch a break. Like, what the hell? Because they said that his son, Bobby Brown Jr., who was on, you know, the Bobby Brown and Whitney show. Y'all, what the hell? What happened? They said that the last Bobby Brown's tragic, um, his son, Bobby Jr., posted about depression just weeks before his sudden death at 28 years old. And they found him in his home. They're not detecting foul play. But what the hell? Like, can you imagine Bobby Brown? First of all, he has a mental illness because he's an addict. That's one. Then his ex-wife is, we don't know. We the, the jury is still out on that. Then his daughter, then his stepson or his daughter's boyfriend, Whitney's son, or whoever, he dies. Um, who else? It's like all of these people around Bobby Brown, like what is, I can't even imagine. I hope that people are around him and supporting him because that's a lot of death and it's very, very close. Like uh, it's just so close. And then your son, so your two children... I just, it's just, it's just sad. It's just really, really, really sad. The other day, DJ Envy made a comment about Megan Thee Stallion going to the white publications and sharing her story and not coming to the black publication. They were sharing a story about, I guess, her GQ um, article, and she talked a lot about the situation between her and Tory Lanez, and you know, the side comments. So Charlemagne says, you know, oh, I thought she was supposed to, she was, wasn't she supposed to come here, but she had a laundry list full of things that we couldn't talk about. So IE, she had a list of boundaries she was setting before she came to the show. And apparently they didn't want to respect her boundaries. And so she didn't come. And then Envy makes a comment like she goes to the white publications, but she doesn't go to the black publications who support her, who talk about her, who give it all, all of these, you know, kudos and things like that. Here's the deal. The most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club, as they label themselves, is not a safe space for black, cis, and trans women. It's just not. Um, over and over again, you guys have shown and demonstrated the inability to be sensitive when needed. And for a black woman who has been a victim of gun violence, and for you all to take a very neutral stance about it, to me, I don't feel like it would be a safe space for her to go. Um, Charlemagne, although you have gotten better, you still like to shock people. And I I can't imagine if one of your daughters were to go on a interview and tell the people not to ask certain questions and then the person or one of the people start asking questions that she, that she asked not to ask. It I don't think it's a safe space for her to be vulnerable in uh, and vulnerable enough to talk about that. Oh, wait, you know, you wanted to hear the other side of the story, which is so funny because most times you don't hear the other side of because of the, the person on the other side of the gun doesn't get to tell their story. Most of the time. And now you have somebody here telling her story and you guys are questioning her at every single step. It's not a safe space. So yeah, I'll do an interview in a magazine, but I'm not sitting across from you. If you, I don't care if you black media or not. The fact that she feels, and I'm glad, because to me, I feel like it was a flex to say, I don't feel safe on The Breakfast Club as a black woman and a victim of gun violence. I don't. And the way that you guys handled that story, I know you do your rumor reports and all this other stuff, but the comments that you make 
after I'm sure she's been listening to and I'm sure people have been telling her and I'm sure she knows I don't think that this is the best place for me to go and for her to be at the height in her career that she is and to make that choice when the breakfast club has been the you know a, a stop for a lot of these people a lot of rappers everybody everybody goes to the breakfast club we're not gonna sit here and act like they don't I watch the breakfast club when I want when they're interviewing somebody that I, I'm interested in knowing what they're talking about but a lot of the stuff I don't, I mean, they haven't been really interviewing people. Yeah, they have. They've been interviewing people, but I haven't been really, like I said, I haven't been really watching their interviews, especially during the pandemic. But I, I only watch it when it's somebody that I am interested in seeing. I'm not watching them just to be like, oh, I'm supporting the Breakfast Club. I'm just going to sit here and watch this interview with NBA young boy over here looking like a ferret. I'm not sitting here watching none of that shit. You understand what I'm saying? Um, And so... I feel like being touted as the most dangerous morning show is probably not working in your favor this time around. Because if you're the most dangerous and black women feel like they're not being protected, especially when, when they are a victim at the hands of a black man, and you have two black men who have, one is a, you, it, both of them have cheated on their wives. Both of them have been uh, men who lack self-discipline and self-control. Charlemagne has showed us over and over again that he wants to shock the audience by asking questions. You know, he is working on himself and we have seen growth in Charlemagne. But I, I, I can see why they feel a way, but they need to step out of it and be like, hmm. Megan the Stallion doesn't trust us. And why? And why? Maybe it's time to do some reflection on how you guys treat black women, cis and trans. You may want to see how you treat black women and how you treat other people or how you treat discussions surrounding black women. You might want to step outside and wonder why one of the 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 work the year's most favorite or whatever the what she won the most the the best rapper is not coming to this black ass show you know and you know you got angela Yee there and you know angela Yee has shown and i don't know if she felt like she had to do it you know but she has shown to like not speak up you know, she, lately she has like, like in the past year and a half, Angela will really go against Charlemagne or say, you know, or speak up and like say, you know, when they give a weird opinion, because the way that that story even went, Angela was given her rumor report. And when she was done talking about it, both of the men stayed quiet. They take a weird stance when the story is surrounding a woman and the and the person that the woman has been victimized as a black man. They take a weird stance and they and they they don't respond as quick as they should. And when they respond, it's almost like, okay, let's be careful not to make the man look any type of way make sure make sure although we are talking to the victim make sure that you don't make the man look bad maybe charlemagne envy and angela for megan the stallion to say she doesn't she she basically doesn't trust you guys and other black media outlets to be to be um to safeguard her in her vulnerability Maybe you need to step outside of yourselves and, and, and look inside and wonder why America's best or favorite rapper of the time doesn't want to stop by on your show. Anyways, y'all take care of each other. Protect your energy. We'll get down in the comments. Peace.